Hi, this is Lewis. Hello everyone, this is Aldo. Welcome to the recruitment show. Today it was a pleasure to be joined by Glenn Martin, who is a talent acquisition professional. And we talked about using social and video to supercharge people engagement. Awesome conversation. Hope you enjoy it. Glenn, thanks for joining us on the podcast. Lewis, Aldo, thanks for the invite, man. Pleasure. Really, really cool. Pleasure. So social and video to supercharge people engagement. Yeah, it's, it's uh, cool. It's, it cool sounds, topic. It sounds sexy, doesn't it? Very sexy. <laughs> yeah, like, Very has, it, sexy. has it actually got any substance? <laughs> well, I don't know. We've, we've been using it to try and supercharge our social engagements. Yeah. And, yeah. and I can see for work. I mean, we, we're using it more and more. Yeah. With clients and what have you been using specifically? Or what do you what are you what so are you seeing? This this is always this is a concept that's been I've been kind of I guess researching, thinking about, trying to trying to underpin what does it mean and the uh, event that should it go ahead next week, I'll be at, oh, yes. um, is, is probably the summation of this kind of search and research into what does, what does this actually mean? What is, what is supercharging via social and how to use video? And I think, I think it starts with, or started for me, with, with a problem, right? Which is essentially, when you think about an individual's kind of journey from candidate to employee, it's so segmented, right? Yeah. Um, and very few companies think about it in its entire life cycle, simply because it's split up into ownership by different departments. That's right? true, yeah. So I started with, certainly with regards to social platforms, right? It's all about Twitter, it's kind of Facebook, LinkedIn, etc. when you're trying to attract and engage a candidate. And then as soon as they flip into the employee, they're pushed into this kind of corporate world where social becomes and video becomes almost less of something that they have uh, visibility of accessibility of that's getting pushed towards them and they get they get onto the more corporate platforms so your, your hrs systems your internal sort of finance systems etc cetera, etc cetera. so it's like firstly that end-to-end life cycle how can we continue to use social and video to continue to engage candidate through to employee and actually firstly how many companies have done that yeah how many have done it well so yeah. that was almost like that the, the starting point because yeah. I think if you if you think about and I, I jotted this down actually just because from a metrics perspective certain but it's, it's kind of an overview right so if you think about how many systems and platforms an individual will, will interact with candidate through to employees so first and foremost one to two systems in applying so it might be linked in into the ATS then as a candidate you get a ping back from the ATS thanks for your application yeah and then you engage with the internal recruitment team or recruitment agency or you hear nothing or you hear nothing. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly that. And and then if you do get scheduled, it might be via you know corporate calendar, Calendly, something along yes. those lines. Yeah. So do you get or, stalked then as well? Do you think stalked in terms of so you get invited via Calendly or whatever? Oh yeah, yeah. And the, then the nudges you mean? And then the little oh someone's checked out my profile. Yeah. Uh, someone's met, looked at me on Instagram, Facebook. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You you kind of get a sense that people have seen and looked at all of your your kind of social profiles. Yeah. Which, if you think holistically about your social footprint, you'd be like quite cool with that. You'd be comfortable with that. But it, most people separate, right? Yeah. Personal and business. So everybody thinks, oh, well, they're only looking at my LinkedIn profile. But actually, if you're quite active on Facebook and Instagram, they're going to look at that. You know, and I mean, who it's, isn't nowadays? Yeah, I mean, it's, people are inquisitive. They're curious, right? Yeah, of course. And what about Twitter? Because we were talking about how you have different platforms now. Obviously, we have mm-hmm. LinkedIn. But uh, Twitter is still quite out there. Useful, you think, in the... Oh, man. Twitter, Twitter. I have a love-hate relationship with. Really, <laughs> I mean, genuinely, I like... I, I really, Twitter is the one that I continue to try to, to really get some value out of. Yeah. Um, and certainly my, my Twitter polls are famous for being absolutely awful. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the response rate, sorry. Yeah. But it's the hard resp- though, it's hard. Yeah. Maybe it's more in the US that works uh, uh, better with uh, I don't know, I think it feels like for Twitter, um, you needed to be on the boat like a while ago. Yeah, man. To yeah, really yeah. build up the followers. Yeah. Because you've got to be on it. Because I think nowadays, really, the focus is probably more LinkedIn for yeah. business. Yeah. 100%. Like building up your followers. Yeah. The engagement's really good and stuff. I th- yeah. I think you're right. I think Twitter, if you're if you're consistently on there, I think you can you can build that kind of engagement and that narrative. It's very difficult to sort of drop in and drop out when yeah. it comes to Twitter. Um, hence why you know that love hate relationship. And like yeah. I say, my Twitter polls. I mean, I put one out uh, last week. 
zero engagement, zero zero votes because you know it's, people don't see it. Yeah. I mean, well, yeah, there, there is that piece around. Do you promote it? Do you really try and push it further forward? Um, but I think you're right. I think the LinkedIn is has got a lot better. Yeah. Certainly since they've introduced LinkedIn Live and they've given specific people licenses to do LinkedIn Live oh. and stream. So, so for those who really don't know, what's what's LinkedIn Live? Yeah, it's, it's basically their video capability, right? So it's their, I guess, their version to to kind of battle things like Facebook and Instagram, Instagram and Actually, I think it's 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 a very good vehicle for people that are using LinkedIn to share knowledge, to increase engagement. Mm-hmm. But equally, on the flip side, there are people out there just continuing to use it as a vehicle to sell. Right. And I, yeah, think that, yeah, yeah. I think that's always the that's challenge, the, thing, the fine line, right? Yeah, that's the thing with LinkedIn is it's getting it right between generating and creating really interesting content for your audience mm. and selling. Yeah. And a lot of the time, people are trying to sell on there. Yeah, man. which is almost which is disengaging. Like you don't want to see people selling. Hundred percent. And I think you know people try and dress it up as um, almost giving you value, kind of giving you content. Like you know, here's two or three points to interview better. Mm-hmm. But actually, what they're trying to do is wrap that up around. If you want more, uh, you know, kind of tutelage around this, my consultancy does X, Y, and Z. Yeah. Um, so they're they're using it as a kind of fishing tool yeah. uh, for further sales. Whereas the people that are truly mm-hmm. delivering mm-hmm. value are really pushing um you know the boundaries in terms of sh- knowledge sharing and stuff so, so mm-hmm. like you guys right you know with you know the podcasts and everything you're putting out there you're not doing that simply because you want to push forward the kind of consultancy it's because you generally care about one the community two the in the the topics that you're talking about and sharing and you're just looking to contribute to that overall conversation and i think that's the best position and starting point everybody can yeah can yeah and i see on. in uh, linkedin for example you can connect all the dots from searching jobs to do the right filtering process, but even reaching out to the to the person who posted that job, to the recruiter, mm. internal recruiter, and uh, hence they have absorbed a lot of, of audience from uh, the likes of Monster. Actually, mm. who looks for a job of Monster? Oh, LinkedIn I mean, specific, just goes yeah. on LinkedIn specifically because so you yeah. have a whole experience there. Yeah. yeah. So on the so we've talked about attraction a little bit, right? Kind of looking at the candidates. What do you think of glass doors? So this is now now yeah. candidates looking at the yeah. company before they've they've actually stepped yeah. in through. I think um, I think Glassdoor has a lot of value personally. Um, yeah. I know that I think initially when Glassdoor really started to generate traction, people were like oh you know it's just a it's a, it's a, like a soapbox for you know disgruntled employees <laughs> to anonymously you know berate their their previous <laughs> employer. But I I think that's if you actually look at the reviews on Glassdoor, those types of reviews are really minimal. They're in the minority. And actually, a lot of the Glassdoor reviews are very valuable. Have and you know, have proven that they have helped to generate candidate engagement. You know, it's it's a place where people will go to sort of validate that perhaps they're thinking mm-hmm. around a particular company. So yeah, yeah I think yeah. I think personally for me, I think Glassdoor's got a lot of value. It's interesting yeah. that I think it's Reed. Is it Reed now owns Glassdoor? Well, I'm not sure. Yeah. Um, or Indeed. Is it Indeed? Indeed, Indeed Jobs. Yeah. Indeed, yeah. Indeed owns Glassdoor. And actually, Indeed as a platform has more reviews on it than Glassdoor. But oh, it's really? just not used for... Are both the same? A re- yeah, uh, yeah, part of the- yeah, it's actually got more reviews on it than Glassdoor. Oh, wow. But it's not actually used. Mm-hmm. It's not actually thought of as a platform mm-hmm. to go and look at... You yeah, know, they acquired for $1.2 billion. Yeah, there you go. So, yeah, so it's, yeah. Glassdoor for me, definitely. And I'm, I'm really happy when I see you know, people engage on it. So company I'm working for at the moment, yeah. um, certainly we, for the international team, um, we've had a number of kind of reviews on Glassdoor um, over the last sort of six months. Um, some positive, some negative, but actually it gives you an opportunity to address both, yeah. right? To yeah. say thank you um, to the individuals that have kind of endorsed you positively, mm-hmm. but actually address some of the underlying issues that people raise that, where they're slightly disgruntled and unhappy. So and, yeah, uh, for me, it's cool. Can you uh, reply to that those comments? Uh, you know how they're doing the, uh, with um, accommodation and, and yeah, uh, yeah. restaurant reviews. Can you actually yeah. challenge that comment? So I think, well, first and foremost, you you have to uh, claim your page as a company. Yeah. So then that gives you admin rights to go in and respond to the reviews directly as you know, a representative of your company. Um, and yeah, I think challenge, well, first and foremost, if somebody's bringing something to you that they're not happy about, you've got to acknowledge that, okay, cool, that's their experience. And you need to really sort of unpack what the, you know, the real thrust of their, I guess their, their issue or their negative experience is. And if actually, it turns out that you've got to take ownership 
for creating a really poor candidate experience, acknowledge it, learn from it. That humility and that acknowledgement, I think, actually is, is probably more empowering. Yeah, mm-hmm. but sometimes if you see if you see companies debating the comment, it feels a little bit defensive, Drake. You know, I think you just gotta you gotta hold yeah. your hands up, whatever. Yeah, totally. uh, the only the only, the other thing which Twitter's also uh, guilty of is you can be anonymous, and it's mm. just a, ple- a place for people just to vent. Yeah, uh, but even if they don't even believe it. You know, mm. so you've got to take it sometimes with a little pinch of salt. Mm. Um, but I think a, a really great tool, and we haven't mm. even stepped into the interview room yet. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And this is the thing, right? So you think about all of these platforms that you could look at, um, certainly researching companies, attracting potential candidates, looking to engage them, multiple platforms. And as you said, you've not actually got into the internal company piece yet, and the platforms they're using, the video content they may look to generate. So, you know, I mean, I think I worked it out as a, a very high level. If you went candidate through to employee, that, that kind of life cycle, you could touch anything between seven and 10 different platforms. Yeah. And I still remember Is some it? years ago, um, I used to go to the shop, buy the newspaper hmm? and circle the job offers yeah. and pick up the phone and call. Did you, did you do that? You're, showing, the you're showing your age now. <laughs> <laughs> but it's incredible how we've been involved. He's showing our collective it's age there because we were both nodding. Old, <laughs> old. So what do you think is going to be the future after this? I mean, in 10 years from now, how do you see, you know, these platforms will evolve into? <sighs> yeah, that's a really, that's a big question, Aldo. I mean, I, I, mm, I don't even think I'm best positioned to, I, I'll, take a, I'll take a punt in terms of the fact that I think the value of, so first and foremost, to your point around kind of glass door and, and the sort of negative reviews, every touch point that you have with a potential customer, whether a candidate or a customer, I think you need to own that. You need to have consistency across those platforms. And I think you need to be able to be transparent and share really meaningful information. Mm-hmm. What platforms will win or lose longer, longer term, I think will de- be determined by the company's approach. Mm-hmm. So say for instance, if Twitter does have that kind of low engagement, mm-hmm companies will naturally move away from that. It may just become a kind of more an individual contributor's place for kind of debate. Whereas like Glassdoor and LinkedIn will become very company focused. So companies will extract real value from that. Yeah. They can share really relevant content and they can actually engage candidates and candidates will be comfortable going onto that. I think, it, yeah, and equally as well, it's that, it's that division between what people perceive as their personal life and personal space and where they want to talk about their personal views and where they want to contribute their business opinions. And when there's a conversation about authentic leadership and being authentic and being an authentic self, it's a good argument for just being open. This yeah. is me, it's why I like this on the weekend. Yeah, exactly. That's what I, I think. I, so just a, a point, the, the company I work for at the moment now, um, the, the co-founder and CEO, he genuinely goes onto Glassdoor, reviews Glassdoor, he, he takes it very seriously, mm-hmm. um, and he will respond himself uh, to people, both positive and negative, and... I must admit, when I when I joined the company, I was like, mm, yeah, that's probably Izzy A eh? or, 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 or the comms the comms team. Yeah. But genuinely, right. it's him. He's absolutely happy to take ownership of that because awesome. he feels as a as the you know one of the focal points of the business. If he's not communicating with people, whether they be candidates, customers, how authentic can the business be overall? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think absolutely. that it's it's a good model. It's called that. It's called that. Yeah. Once so once we're in the inter- in the interview process, what mm. what technology and platforms oh, are man. we moving into? <laughs> well, it depends on the process, right? I yeah. mean, anything from video video interviewing technology, psychometric tests, technical tests. I mean, you know, there's a myriad of, of kind of platforms that you could, you could potentially engage with dependent on, um, you know, what particular role you're applying for. Yeah. Um, I think there's definitely value in it. Yeah. Um, certainly, you know, if you're looking at you know, sort of interviewing for technical competency, absolutely have that as part of the process. And are you using many, so the psychometrics, are you using much? So it's, it differs from customer to customer, to be fair. Fine, I yeah. mean, some startups, as you well know, yeah. um, startups have just don't adopt it to begin with because it's, it's a cost, cost mm-hmm. right? Yeah, they, it's come down now though. I yeah. mean, it's some really cool ones that are just doing yeah. lower cost and... Equally what you and I have talked about previously, right? Yeah. It's the fact that sometimes companies just don't know how to put together a, a kind of interview screening process. Absolutely, right? yeah. So they, they don't even go searching for some of this cool tech. Yeah, that's true. So yeah, it is, yeah. I'd I'll, like to see more people do that because otherwise, I've said this loads of times, but interviews like speed dating. Hmm? And you take, you know, you meet someone for an hour, you decide you want to spend most of your life with them. 
And how long does it take for people to propose to their partners usually? Yeah. You get yeah. married, I mean. 100%. Some yeah. don't, ever. Some take, you know. But I think with, with, the, with the psychometrics and stuff, um, it's just great to have more data, more information, the better, yeah. I think. Yeah, I think it's, yeah. it, it's definitely more information is, is valuable. Yeah. I often think, certainly when you're going through that interview process, mm-hmm. um, often from a, a candidate point of view or interviewee point of view, you don't really get to express your thoughts and opinions on the process until the end. That's true. Now, if that's a four or five or six stage process, wouldn't it be quite interesting to get that feedback as you go through the process from the individual. Yeah. And that can inform actually sometimes the overall experience, right? Because when you're yeah. at the end of that interview process, you're probably thinking holistically, you might even be indexing on the last person you saw and how they made you feel. Whereas actually, if you could get that sort of incremental feedback from mm-hmm. somebody, you could start to look at your interview process and, and see who's you know who's getting high sort of ratings, who's who's really sort of selling the company, who's really creating a great experience, yeah. and that can inform internal training. That would be awesome. That would be awesome. But then on the other side, the biggest the biggest uh, complaint we have from candidates is feedback from companies. Oh, big time, man! Yeah. You know the the, um, the lack of feedback. <laughs> Always, right. you know. Um, I mean, if they've gone in face to face, I mean, yeah. you, you've talked about this loads of times, right? How, how much time do people dedicate? Thinking yeah. time, prep time, travel time, interview time, all those things, and then people don't get feedback. 100%, feedback is a gift. And, Absolutely, yeah. And people deserve that, candidates deserve that, interviewees yeah. deserve that, because they've taken time to select your company, make an application, and they've taken time to go into your interview process, commit their time and energy to it. The very least you can do is give them some form of feedback or acknowledgement. Now I appreciate LinkedIn makes it very easy to apply, one click, bang. So if you're an in-house recruiter, you think, okay, I'll, I'll reciprocate, it's a, it's a automated message back. But at least give somebody something. Yeah. Just don't ghost yeah. them. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, do you know, if, if, it's, if it's just, they've had a thousand applicants on LinkedIn, mm. I can, you, you can understand an automated response back. Mm. But if it's, if it's a, a video interview, a telephone interview, a face-to-face interview. I mean, there's got to be some personal. Yeah, there's... people forget what it's like to be on the other side. Hundred percent, Lewis. It's, it's... I think it's 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 you know it's wrong that those individuals wouldn't. They're, basically, there's no excuse not to give somebody feedback. Yeah, really. Yeah. Um, sometimes you can't be completely brutally honest because some of the elements are nuanced um, and some of it is determined by the kind of internal dam- dynamic. But there there is always feedback to provide people yeah even uh thank you so much for coming in yeah two minute phone call mm. you know a little bit of feedback and it's massive because you know people talk about bad experiences a lot more mm. than good ones i think i think equally as well the quality of the feedback is important how many times have people said oh they just said i'm too senior or they've said i'm too junior yeah <laughs> i mean it's just it, it, it's the it's the the easiest way to give feedback right in the hope that they won't ask anything you know, more. As, a, as, a, as an internal recruiter or as an agency, yeah. and you don't often get good feedback from the hiring managers. Uh, you've got to ask. You know, you ask, you don't get. You ask, you don't get. I mean, I mean yeah. you know, some, some, some do. I mean, I'm I, not saying everyone's... I get it. I, I mean, look, I was agency side for, for 10 years, right? And I know sometimes how difficult it is to... So even if you've got a really good relationship with a client and a hiring manager, the moment they've decided to not progress with somebody, that person is almost in their rear view mirror. Yeah. And for you to follow up and kind of go, look, can you give me some context around why we're not progressing? They're like, oh, you know, they're too senior, they're too junior. <laughs> it's, it's about baking that into the process and setting that expectation with the yeah. hiring manager that it's not good enough to just give really skinny yeah. feedback. There should be again. kind of a feedback app well, it should be you some know, tech. You can just Absolutely. sign up for that. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It makes it easier for you just to give you all the parameters and then you get a report yeah. of a feedback. Is there anything your that, you're, that you're using? Not at the moment, no. Uh, I think my process at the moment, given the companies that I'm working for, again, startups, is really about setting the expectation from the beginning. Yeah. Everybody that we progress to, uh, you know, quite a you know, first, second or third stage, or if they complete the interview loop, they deserve feedback. We're, we're gathering feedback as we go. We're putting that into the sort of ATS. So that at the end of the interview loop, actually, you've got all of this information you can refer back to. And that takes a discipline and an education. Um, yeah. So it's not often always the, the case. Trust me, when I, when I turned up at this company, it was, it was very different. There were, wasn't a huge amount of interview feedback in there, yeah. um, certainly from the international team, but they, they just had, didn't have the time. 
Yeah, that's a problem. Um, With the video stuff, are you mm. seeing more and more companies um, doing a video interview at some point in the process? Though? Yeah, yeah. I, I think actually video is being utilised a lot for what I would call volume recruitment. So if you think about grad programmes, yeah. That's where I've seen it utilised the most. I uh, did a, a couple of a couple of projects with um, yeah. um, companies around their grad programmes, and they were using video a lot, but they were they were over indexing on it. So right. as an applicant, Lewis, you'd you'd, yeah. you'd apply, you get an automated response, you'd get an invite to a video interview. So I can't remember with the, the name. person or just no no. So it's recorded video interview. Oh wow, so the question. So this this was my yeah. point. They were over indexing on the video, so you actually didn't get to speak to a person from this company unless you got to an assessment centre. Right. And you'd already gone through three stages: application, test, and video interview. So it can can go the other way, but Crazy. I think it, I think it has its place definitely. Yeah, I think with with uh, with COVID nineteen, got to mention the coronavirus. Indeed. Um, with the international searches we've been doing, we found video video interviewing is now is really ticking yeah. up. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, uh, live video interviewing yes, is very live, valuable. Live, yeah. Very valuable. As I said, we, when we were walking in here, yeah. trying to coordinate, uh, if you were thinking about trying to coordinate a face-to-face -face interview between you know, a candidate or interviewee in Berlin, a uh, senior management team in London and Seattle, um, that's going to be quite challenging. Right now, right? it's completely impossible. <laughs> exactly. They just but, with, but with video, you can, you can connect all of those dots yeah. um, and make it actually a really engaging, very valuable sort of process are you, for everybody. Are you finding people would hire, do you think people would hire just based on the video interview, given what's going on at the moment, out of face to face? Good, good question. Um, I've known companies that have, right, right. Um, but it was very role specific. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So I, I wouldn't necessarily say um, you could do it across every yeah. department, but yeah. role specific, I think it, it it can certainly be done. Yeah, moving moving inside now. Mm. So you hired the uh, mm. the new employee. What are you what are you seeing people using now to, to uh, engage so, with their employees? And so welcome to our legacy tech estate, <laughs> 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 our our old HRS systems are layered on with some of our new software that yeah. doesn't interact AI, with either. AI plug in and um, uh, yeah, so it's it's an interesting one because I did I just did a. Uh, a HRS implementation with a company I've just wrapped up with. And it was really interesting because we were taking effectively three systems and putting all that data into one system. And when you looked at the candidate, the, sort of the employee journey before that, they were booking annual leave here. They were kind of um, booking time off in one system, logging timesheets on another, getting documentation from another. Oh, and it, 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 it it's a far cry from the calendar on the wall. You used to have to highlight the days yeah, yeah. that you're off. Yeah, I don't know if you remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but but in, to your point around your your question around sort of the engagement piece, yeah. um, it's such a sliding scale. Yeah. I mean, it's uh, I, I would say there is a real. I I don't know of a, a platform that's doing that exceptionally well. The platform that I just implemented into this this scale up, I thought was very good. Mm -hmm. It was my first experience of it, and I could see the engagement levels increase already, because yeah. um, it's almost got you know it's got those kind of virtual chat rooms. It's got a visibility yeah. across different sites. And I think oftentimes that, that helps. It's that transparency of what are your colleagues doing? Yeah. What yeah. are they interested in? How WeChat. can we connect? <laughs> yeah. WeChat is like, he has all these services, for example, that you yeah. can do. Or Slack, I things. mean. Slack's, Slack's a good, it's a very good one. But I think that the thing that everybody's always conscious of is the fact that, and correct me if I'm wrong, mm -hmm. because Slack is externally hosted, it's not yours at the end of the day right whilst you could you you own the the kind of slack channel as it were the name it's it's hosted externally so the data and the information you share there you have to be quite you do. like quite a streak care. like streak have you ever used it uh, no. at all no i haven't no what's, well what's it's that? uh Tell yeah, me more. It's, yeah no well it's uh it's it, it links up with your email and helps you build uh, uh pipelines of candidates or mm. you know or for business development and so on but it, again it's external ah. it's an add-on to, to yeah. it's an add-on yeah. all the information is managed yeah. externally we, we we have well, internally we have Google Apps for business. Yeah. Um, we have a company WhatsApp group. Yeah. Uh, and we, with Google, we use Google Hangouts. Yeah. Uh, we often have SMS. We have mm -hmm. email. We have telephone call. We have. Yeah. Uh, there's so many different ways to communicate. We, tr we tried Facebook uh, Workplace. I think. It's oh, called. you tried Workplace, did you? Yeah. What workplace. did you think? Well, no one could be bothered. 
everyone just was it's what's whatsapp the what's the thing is the whatsapp group is so easy so, yeah. like we're just messaging i don't know photos and we're like just it's it's, it's like casual yeah. like kind of getting people more friendly kind of star whatsapp is my go-to comms channel yeah 100 percent. you know what it's so it's, it's crazy because uh we have our uh, colleague in the u.s so um there was some news regarding whatever the situation is so we're messaging at one in the morning, two in the morning, which mm. you think in the past that it's outrageous, but yeah. it's just, you can read it whatever you want. You're not forced to read it at two in the morning. Yeah. But it's like, oh, by the way, uh, team, uh, mm. this has this been going on yeah. and it's like one thirty in the morning. Definitely. And uh, you, you seem not to um, leave work for some reason, even if it's late, yeah. you can just be interactive at any time or any given day. Yeah, I think it's, it's you know how personally you're invested in your job as well, right? I mean, it, if you don't see that delineation but all that that boundary between work and, and personal, but I think you're quite it's, comfortable, right? Yeah, yeah, I think it's going to get more invasive with 5G. There are going to be so many new elements yeah. that we're, we're not even aware of that's mm. uh, going to make it more invasive, that kind of interaction. Yeah. Do you, you think know? it's good for the experience? Like, do you think people yeah. are enjoying working at companies more because of this social Ooh. interaction? Well, that's a good question. Um, I would like to think so. Um, some surveys show that people do want that separation between work and, and kind of personal life. I guess it's how you embed it in your culture and how you get people to engage. And where, if it's freely engagement and people are happy to kind of pick up those messages yeah. outside of core working hours, great. If, if they don't want to, that's fine. It's yeah. their choice. Yeah. Um, but to your point, um, we use, yeah, certainly internally at the moment, Slack, big one, Zoom, as well for kind of video interviewing um, and there's numerous other kind of I've tried that Zoom it's really good it's really good yeah Zoom's great um, Zoom's and you can good. you can hack together um, kind of some really neat quick video content with mm -hmm. Zoom so flip onto Zoom um, record a, a quick sort of three question Q&A with a hiring manager pop that into subtitle man you've got something you can push out on LinkedIn straight away wow. increase the engagement amazing, um, amazing. Because, yeah because ultimately what, what's the one thing that candidates want to do when they see a job that they're interested in. They want to speak to the hiring manager. They want to hear from the hiring manager. They yeah. want to get a sense of what is this job really about beyond yeah. the words that you put on that job spec. Yeah. And if uh, if they see, you know, I don't know, almost like a 45, 50 second, maybe minute video of a hiring manager answering three questions like, why should I join? Why is, it, is this exciting? And why is it, what projects are you doing at the moment? That gives you a world of just such a different dynamic yeah. around the role. Yeah, um, yeah, and it's really easy to do and really quite inexpensive. So there's yeah. there's there's stuff that you can utilise that doesn't have to be you know, high spec tech. True. Is there, is there anything anyone's doing um, unbelievably well Ooh, that everyone really? that anyone else should implement? Uh, yeah, that's a or really just, good or question. Just, or is it just like just start doing something? <laughs> I I think. Yeah. I think you you really got to be you've got to understand first and foremost what what is what is your your real objective if you're if you're to your point out if you're just trying to generate more candidate engagement or a, a a greater pipeline of candidates okay you've got to think about how you approach that and certainly if it's role specific what would be of interest to this particular community and then the platforms to engage them and actually do some research around actually what format Mm -hmm. in, you know, gets the the, the highest engagement, mm -hmm. um, and then you formulate your tech around that, yes. right? Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, yeah, I think yeah, it's a good question. I I probably need to look into that and see who's doing something exceptionally well. It's a tough uh, one because I, I don't know the answer either. Yeah. Um, so many companies are doing so many different things. Yeah, it's interesting. Sure. The one the one thing I would say is. I like now seeing companies generating interesting content for their audience. Yes. Like, that's the thing that we're trying to do. Well, that's the thing we're doing, yeah, right? You're doing it well, we, man, seriously. Thank you, thanks. It's Me like, too. we generate content, and by the way, we do exec search. Yeah. It's like a kind of almost, uh, you know, oh, yeah. do they? Oh, I didn't know that. Well, I hope they do, but by, a byproduct, you know, yeah. rather than trying to sell. And, and any, any industry, I think yeah. most, everyone should be doing that now. Uh, yeah, definitely. And I think that, you know, yeah. that comes from a, a kind of value space, right? Yeah. In terms of what you want to do. You know, there is a function of your business, but at the same token, you shouldn't be solely defined by the function of the business. You are you're yeah. going beyond that to share, contribute. You know, the sort of yeah. kind of speaking panels you're on as well. You're, yeah. you're getting involved in the conversation yeah. and the commentary and yeah. trying to add some, you know, some positive insights to that. And I think if companies take that approach, actually, they'll probably see their engagement levels increase Massively. rather than. 
you know, not not point any fingers, but if we could see less pictures on LinkedIn of people around a, a food table celebrating, <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know how many of those I seem Another to see every week. Which yeah, one was that? I seem to see yeah. every week, which is which is totally cool, right? I mean, yeah. look, if you're celebrating your business, that's great. Um, but just remember that sometimes the audience don't connect with that because you know it's it's kind of it's just yeah like I say it's just not something they can it's particularly true. connect the other the other thing that I've, I've got a big thing about is everyone's chasing new followers more likes vanity you know vanity just like metrics. Constant, yeah, yeah. I think I think it's just focus on your current network of people mm. like like you guys are doing with the social recruiting show it's like mm. a lot of the people that listen know you yeah and you're, and you're generating great content for them thank you and other people start to hear and they start to listen right yeah. If, if your focal point is is like my my friends my mm. network yeah. and you develop content for that then it just starts to yeah stable. exactly and, and equally as well um, don't be defined by it, perhaps your 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 kind of jobs and the interests around that I mean certainly some of the stuff that you're doing around the other podcasts right you're, you're exploring completely different areas and subject yeah. areas which I think is fascinating and yeah so it don't be solely limited just by the company the sector the current sort of trends yeah. that, that, that are in that sector because yeah, you, you could be missing some real great opportunities yeah, no, outside true. of that because you, know? you know the same person might enjoy a breakfast on the roof of the net and also enjoy well a, a farmer's market in State exactly. Newington or exactly. whatever it might be exactly that exactly that <laughs> so it's great awesome thank you very much for coming great. in thank you so much hey it's been a pleasure great chat great thank chat. you so much pleasure, pleasure.